Hey everybody, it's Smitty here um, in my backyard and um, it's been a while since I've done a video but I'm going to give this one a shot. So I got into a Twitter conversation this morning with KE8DNU uh, and if I got that call sign wrong, forgive me, I'm going from memory, I'll put a correction in the comments below, but um, I got in a Twitter conversation with him about antennas uh, and he was asking, uh, he said he has an off-center fed dipole uh, cut to 80 meters, which covers most bands, but not 30 meters that he wants to uh, uh, that he wants to be able to get on. So he was going to put up a 30 meter dipole, and we kind of started a conversation about dipoles. And he said he's already got a six meter dipole up that he was going to take down to put the 30 meter up, and that got me to thinking uh, about fan dipoles because, as you can see here, I run a fan dipole at my house. Um, and I told him, don't take down the six meter, just put up the 30 meter section on the existing uh, center support and ballon and use it for both six meters and 30 meters. Turns out his off center fed dipole works for six meters, uh, but it doesn't work for 15. So instead I am trying to talk him into building a 30 meter and a 15 meter uh, fan dipole. And that with the off-center fed dipole will give him complete coverage or darn near it uh, for the entire HF portion of the bands. Uh, and so we started talking about how to build a fan dipole and most of the online resources for fan dipoles have you doing a separate wire out from the center, which is correct, but then you kind of fan them out, hence the name, and you have to support each wire separately. This is an image I found on hamuniverse.com that shows what I mean by having to fan them out and support them separately. Uh, and that works, but you do end up having to tie off a whole bunch of ropes. Um, and if you don't have convenient places to tie those off, that's not uh, a very convenient antenna to put up. What I did here, you'll notice that all of the wires, oh, this is an 80 meter, 40 meter, and 30 meter fan dipole. So if you notice, they're all kind of parallel. These are little sections of PVC pipe that I cut and then drilled holes through and ran the wires through to use as uh, spacers. But right here, you can kind of see one of the first joins. And in a second, I'm gonna go up on the roof and show this to you closer. Uh, and then over here is the second join. Um, and what I'm doing is I am tying off the shorter lead, which in this case, I believe was the bottom wire. So I'm tying off the bottom wire to a little loop that I put in the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm tying off the shorter wire with a section of rope to a little loop that I put in the longer wire. Uh, and I'm going to go up and show that to you now. Um, but first, I guess I want to talk a little bit about what a fan dipole is. So a fan dipole is just like any other dipole, uh, you know, half wave dipole, except that you have multiple elements coming out of your center insulator and your ballon. And the idea is that if you've got multiple elements, like in this case I've got an 80 meter, a 40 meter, and a 30 meter, whichever band you are operating on and putting energy into, assuming that one of those legs is resonant at that band, then that resonant leg will go, it'll start resonating, which lowers its impedance. And when it's, you know, it goes down to about 50 ohms, right? I mean, that's kind of the way a dipole works. And as soon as you get down to 50 ohms, all of the other ones are going to be a much higher impedance than that 50 ohms. And when you have a high impedance in parallel with a low impedance, the low impedance is the one that gets all of the energy. The high impedance one kind of disappears. And that's true with resistors and just about any other, um, uh, uh, any, any other load right, whether it's a complex impedance or, or a simple impedance. So if you put a 50 ohm resistor in parallel with a 1000 ohm resistor or a 10,000 ohm resistor, the 50 ohm resistor is gonna dissipate all the heat and the 10,000 ohm will just get a little tiny bit of it, but it really insignificant compared to the 50 ohm. So that's what's happening with a fan dipole. If I've got an 80 meter and a 40 meter antenna, both hanging off of the same uh, center support, um, then when I operate on 40 meters, the 40 meter resonant section will drop down to about 50 ohms and the 80 meter resonant section will stay at a high impedance. I don't know what the number is, but it's high enough that it doesn't get any of the energy. And so in this way, and similarly, when you operate on 80 meters, 
the 80 meter one will drop to resonance and drop to about 50 ohms and the 40 meter antenna will disappear electrically. And so in this way you can build a multi-band antenna using a single ballon, a single feed line, um, with multiple elements hanging off of the same dipole center support. And then it's just a matter of how do you physically construct that dipole so that it uh, works physically. And so that's why what I wanted to show you today is how I built mine. Um, so let's go up on the roof and take a look at what it, what it looks like. So here I am on the roof, um, and that is my antenna mast, which is literally just a section of one and a half inch pipe. Or maybe it's one and a quarter. I don't remember exactly what the size was, but steel, uh, steel pipe, irrigation pipe, uh, that's been zinc coated so it doesn't rust. And um, it is literally just poked through a hole in the roof. Let's see if I can do this without dropping the phone. Literally poked through a hole in the roof right next to the overhang. And then in the ground, it's dug about two feet into the ground and poured some concrete around there. And so the house is acting as a guy and the uh, two foot section of concrete at the bottom is, is anchoring the bottom. And it sticks up, um, uh, I think the total height is about 28 feet, I think. So it's a 21 foot section. Well, that's what I did. So it's a 21 foot section of one and a half inch. And then I have a 10 foot section of one inch kind of cascaded into the top or telescoped into the top. Anyway, at the top of that is the ballon. You can kind of see the white ballon right here. And then the coax comes down here. And it's literally just a one-to-one -one ballon, like a normal dipole ballon. Uh, and I have multiple wires coming off of each leg, the left side and the right side. And then the separators here are just simple lightweight PVC pipe with some holes drilled in it. Um, I kind of didn't want to bother taking the thing down to show you too much closer. Uh, I think the description is simple enough that that should be pretty good. Let's go take a look at what one of the joins looks like. Take a look at this. So this bottom wire here is my 40 meter section. I'm sorry, 30 meter section. That's the shortest one. It used to be a 40 meter section, but I cut it too short and it would never, uh, it would never go down low enough into the bottom end of the 40 meter band. So I turned it into a 30 meter section and I ran another longer wire here, uh, this black one in the middle, um, as a 40 meter section. So let's get a little closer to this. Uh, you'll notice that this is, this section right here is wire and this one right here is rope. And so I joined it right at a separator. Um, and I kind of looped one through the other. Technically, you could do this with an insulator if you wanted to be a little bit cleaner about it, but I went cheap and easy. Um, and then, so the wire comes over here and it stops right there. And then it loops back on itself and it just use a little, uh, uses a little buckle, buckle thing here. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but it's the kind of a, a U-shape bolt on one side and kind of a cast aluminum clamp on the other side to hold it in place and so that allows me to adjust the tuning of the antenna i can make this i can move this in and out to make it longer or shorter so that's how i tune that leg of the antenna but then i've got this rope section here that comes along to a little loop i tied in the next longer wire so this right here is just a little knot that i put in the wire itself and i tied the rope off to that and so you can see that I can lengthen and shorten this rope, <coughs> excuse me, to add or remove tension from this wire. And then this, this wire here is my 40 meter antenna and it just continues on to the next join. Um, in this way, you're able to kind of tighten the, the longest wire and then, you know, get it taut and then go into the next join which is this one here. It's a little bit higher above my arms, so I can't, this is above my, uh, my ability to, to uh, stand next to it. But, you know, so that's the, the tightest joint. So I, I make the 80 meter section on top tight all the way across. Then I come over here, adjust this one to length, tighten it up, and then I come back up to the next one without killing myself, uh, and then make this one tight. As you do this, the ultimate tension on the antenna is, uh, you know, adjusted by the far end of the wire there. And then the attention of all of the other ones is kind of the sum of it. And so ultimately you end up tightening one and it makes the others a little bit looser. 
uh, for guitar players, it's like tuning a guitar with the uh, Floyd Rose tremolo, or the floating tremolo, where when you tighten one string, all of the other, you know, it pulls the bridge up a little bit and all the other strings get a little looser. It's kind of a pain, but you end up centering, or, uh, you know, kind of um, lean, tending toward a tight and well-managed antenna. This antenna used to have five segments. It used, so it's an 80, 40, and a 30 now. It used to also have 20 and 10 meters. Um, I took off the 20 and 10 because they never tuned up right, and it was kind of crowded, and uh, that getting it all tensioned with five wires was a heck of a lot more complex than getting it tensioned with just the three. So I ended up taking off the 20 and 10 meter sections. Um, but the point being that you can build a fan dipole pretty simply without having to get complex with where you put your, uh, um, your tension wires, you know, the, the, the ropes that, uh, that hold out each of the, of the sections. This is, uh, what's the thin stuff? Is it schedule 80 or schedule 20? I can't remember, but this is nice and thin, just PVC pipe, little half inch section that I've drilled some holes through, um, and just ran the wires through. Let's see if I can get a little closer view on that, right? So it's literally just a simple hole in PVC just to keep the wires separated so that they're not uh, banging up against each other. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's a fan dipole. They're pretty easy to make. They're incredibly effective. Uh, having the wires so close to each other, uh, one could probably make a pretty good argument that they would work better if they were separated out. Um, but my 40 and 80 meter works great. 80 meter works great. It doesn't even notice the other wires. 40 meter doesn't quite tune up to a one-to-one -one because it's got this other load right next to it. And then 30 meters is a little bit more. That's why 20 and 10 didn't work out so well because they had so much extra stuff nearby them. Um, and so I ended up taking those apart. But uh, for KE8 DNU, I think I got your call sign right. Again, I'm going from memory. Uh, for your case, you're looking at 30 and 15 meters where the two bands that we were talking about, and that's roughly equivalent to a uh, uh, 80 and 40 meter from a we'll load each other um, standpoint. And so th this would work out, this design would work out really well. So anyway, that's it. Uh, that's a fan dipole, and uh, at least the way I build it. And it works really well. And now, so I've got three bands on a single cable coming up to the roof. And uh, it gets the job done. I use it all the time. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, um, you know, hit them up in the comments below or uh, grab me on Twitter. I am at Smitty Halibut, S-M-I-T-T-Y-H-A-L-I-B-U-T. Um, thanks for watching and subscribe if you're interested. Share, let your friends know. Um, kind of feels to get feels good to get back into the saddle of making videos. It's been a while since I've done one, so uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Cheers, everyone. Be good humans. Thank you so much.